First of all, God loves you and so do I. God has already claimed each of you for the kingdom of heaven. And there's nothing you or I can do to lose the salvation that has been created through Jesus Christ. God rescued us from our sinfulness and has given us a new identity in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our righteousness is not based on our own good works, but on the righteousness of God. And that far exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And so nobody's salvation is at stake in anything we do or leave undone. God alone is responsible for our salvation, not we ourselves. We are, however, responsible for how we respond to the limitless grace of God. God has chosen us, each of us and all of us, for the kingdom of heaven. And how we embody that identity is up to us. Almost exactly 40 years ago, two politicians shared a stage. One was a former Hollywood actor, the other a former farmer from Georgia. And over the course of their debate, the actor gave a line that captured the imagination of the electorate and led to the eventual defeat of President Carter. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Now, while I'm not normally one to uh, invoke political figures from the pulpit, this time I'll make an exception. I will shamelessly steal Reagan's challenge and reframe it for our faith. Do you trust God more now than you did a year ago? Do you trust God more now than you did a year ago? Last year, the session did some important, essential, brilliant work and wrote a new mission statement for our congregation, growing faith together as taught through God's Word. God has gathered this family of faith in this place for this purpose, growing faith together as taught through God's Word. And with all the variety of flavors of following Jesus in this area, our particular taste is growing faith together as taught through God's Word. Growing faith is the process of trusting God more and more over time. So do you trust God more now than you did a year ago? Do you? We all know what the right answer is. The right answer. We all know that in a straight A congregation, every single person would be able to say that their faith has grown. That yes, they trust God more now than a year ago. An all-star congregation would also be able to point to the ways that they have grown faith outside their own membership. Teaching their neighbors to trust God through their generosity and their witness within the community. A blue ribbon congregation would be able to encourage other churches within the extended family of faith and help those other churches see that God is working through all of us and help grow the faith of those in other churches as well. But the straight A all star blue ribbon congregation only exists in our imaginations. We have pieces of that. Every church has pieces of that. But no group of people gets it right all the time. And I believe the Lord is much more interested in our honest answer anyway than in our ability to recite the right answer. All of us fall short of the glory of God. Every congregation on the planet is made of people who are no more or less sinful than you and me. Or maybe less sinful than me. You are the salt of the earth. We are the beloved of the Lord. Redeemed by Christ Jesus and empowered by the Holy Spirit for the ministry to which all of us are called. We don't need to hold ourselves to impossible, unattainable standards. We only need to be who God created us to be. You are the salt of the earth. 
Be who God has created you to be. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. We have a purpose that is so tied to our identity that the two cannot be separated. The only way for salt to lose its taste is for it to cease to be salt. Humanity was created to glorify God and enjoy God forever. And when we lose that purpose, we lose our humanity. And the Christian purpose is more specific. We are to make disciples of every nation, teaching them to obey everything Christ has commanded us, and baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our congregation's purpose is to do those things. Glorify and enjoy God. Make disciples, teach, and baptize. And we do those by growing faith together, as taught from God's Word. That is the taste of our salt. That is the stand for our lamp. That is the shine to our city. Growing faith together as taught through God's word. And the only way for us to lose that purpose is to abandon our identity as a church of Jesus Christ. And so I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about us losing that because the scripture shows us that even if we did abandon that, God would still not abandon us. Christ came. Christ died and rose again to restore any saltiness we had lost. To give us that new identity created as the people of God. All we have to do is respond. So do you trust God more now than you did a year ago? Your salvation is assured. It is assured. You cannot lose it. And so there's no threat in giving an honest answer. And it is certainly, certainly not for me or anyone else to judge. <coughs> That's between you and the Lord. Has your faith grown? Have we grown together? Are we, as kids these days might say, getting salty? I want to make clear here that neither of these passages, neither Isaiah nor Matthew, are referring to those who struggle with doubt. Doubt is an essential part of faith. It tills the earth so that faith can grow. Recall that the name Israel means one who wrestles with God. In the wake of trauma, or in the midst of grief, or following a dramatic shift in our world, wrestling with God leads to a closer relationship. It leads to growing faith and increasing trust in the Lord. If you are wrestling with your faith, even if it means you trust God a little less than you used to. Know that you're still on the right track. You haven't lost your taste. You're still getting salty. The days are surely coming when your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. Keep wrestling. That's coming. It may feel uncomfortable, but that's how faith grows in response to challenge. Even salt must be refined before it is fit to decorate our table. Isaiah is not crying out to those who doubt, to those who wrestle. Isaiah's anguished shout is to those who think they can trick the Lord with religious observance rather than wrestling with God and actually building that relationship, growing their faith. 
Isaiah's issue is with those who are abandoning their saltiness while still trying to look like salt. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. No. Trusting God, living as salt of the earth, growing faith means reorienting our lives towards Christ, our vindicator. The Sermon on the Mount gives us a glimpse of how to live our growing faith. Matthew pictures Jesus as an authoritative teacher atop a new Mount Sinai teaching the new law of the kingdom of heaven. And this new law doesn't replace the long history of Israel's wrestling with the Lord. Instead, it fulfills those covenantal promises and assures us that a broken faith cannot keep us out of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus also reminds us that mere religious observance is not enough. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The lawyers and preachers of the day, scribes and Pharisees, were great at keeping the commandments, but they didn't trust God very much. They trusted in themselves. Their ability. They trusted in their tradition. They trusted in their religious institution. And there's a lot of that going around these days too. There's plenty of people in, with PhDs in New Testament studies who don't trust God very much. There's plenty of people who can throw fistfuls of Bible verses that they have memorized, but they don't trust God. Trust is a choice you make within a relationship to be vulnerable. It's not a matter, matter of trivia knowledge. It's not a matter of just watching or keeping traditions. None of that stuff can restore saltiness that has been lost. The only way of getting salty is to continue to be salt of the earth, to trust in our redemption in Jesus Christ, which for our congregation means growing faith together as taught through God's word. You are salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You don't have to change who you are. You are already that. But do you trust God more today than a year ago? Are you working on growing faith together with the rest of the saints whom God has gathered here? We're all in this together, y'all. We're all part of this covenant community, members of this family of faith. The church is to be a community of faith, entrusting itself to God alone, even at the risk of losing its own life. We cannot afford for any of us to be spectators or to just keep up appearances. We've got to grow faith together. We've all got to work on getting salty. And if you're not sure where to start, if you feel stuck where you're at, you're not alone. Each of us are traveling this journey together. We can bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We can pray for one another, support one another, continue to challenge one another to keep growing. We can continue to do it together. So share that with one another. Trust each other as we work on how to trust God more fully with more and more of who we are.
God has already claimed each of you for the kingdom of heaven. I am absolutely sure of that. And there's nothing any of us can do to lose the salvation that has been created through Jesus Christ. God rescued us from our sinfulness and has given us a new identity in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nobody's salvation is at risk. God alone is responsible for our salvation, not we ourselves. We are, however, responsible for how we respond to the limitless grace of God. God has chosen us for the kingdom of heaven. How we embody that, how we live that identity, that's up to us. In life and in death, we belong to God. Let us live as disciples of the Lord, salt of the earth, and getting saltier. Amen.